All right, so I've got the board out of the mold. And I've made two mistakes with it so far. First off, I should have screwed the frame in place instead of using glue and staples. I should have just used just a couple screws so I could just take it off, unscrew it, and then I, that way I could reuse the frame um, and not have to destroy it. I thought I'd be able to pop the thing out, but it uh, wasn't going to work. Uh, the other thing was, of course, not using rebar. Um, you can see it's cracked here already. So it probably wouldn't have cracked and it would have been fine if I had used a frame that I could just unscrew. Um, and it still will be fine. It'll, it'll be fine. But just next time I'm going to use rebar. On the other side I'm going to use rebar. So the reason why I wanted to take it out so early. So it's, it's only been in here like 18 hours or so. And um, one reason is because I just I didn't want it to be sitting in this press all wet for too much longer. And the other thing is because I actually have some things to do on it. So it's actually still really green. So it's actually the cement is really soft, which is part of why it cracked. What I've got to do is check for flatness where the trucks mount, check for a few bumps and a few other things. Um, but mostly I just want to make sure that the places where the trucks are mounting are going to be really flat. So that's what I'm going to be working on. I've got a few problems here and here and here and where what that is is that spots where water got in through the paint and made the MDF swell up <laughs> um, so they yeah, so, so that's why it was really important for me to seal it up so it's just a few spots right in the same spot so it'll be easy to do with it'll be just bondo so anyway get to work on it the cement is still really soft so it means i can actually use uh this putty knife to actually scrape it away and make sure i've got a nice flat surface for the trucks to mount to if the place where the trucks mount isn't flat you can actually end up increasing the risk for snapping base plates and stuff like that. So, um, and this is not a huge deal right now because this is actually going to be, um, this is actually the inside surface of the, of the press, or this is going to be, this is going to be the inside surface of the board. So this is where your feet are going to be going on top of the trucks. So just getting it more flat on this side should make it even flatter when you get to the, um, when you get to the opposite side. So, it's pretty good. It only needs to be flat for a couple of inches. So that is, that's pretty flat there. Um, I've got a little ridge here. I can just knock that down at the corner. There we go. We've got bad lighting again, but oh well. On this other side, got to do the same thing. It's a lot better, actually. It's actually pretty freaking good. Yeah. Okay, that's good. It's got a, it doesn't need to be flat the whole way across, but if you can get about two or so inches of flat, uh, because that's about how wide your truck is gonna be. Um, I've got the other plant trucks and it's got a four inch base plate, um, but still even just, even just two inches is pretty good because that's where the, um, that's the width of the bolt pattern. So as long as it's flat between where the bolts are gonna be, you should be good. Um, the other thing on this board is I have the, I have the flat foot, foot platform, and it goes from around here to here. It's kind of a, a wedge shape. So I just got to make sure that that's nice and flat. So it's just got a little high spot just about right here. 
It's got a little low spot here. Making it really flat actually makes it a really big difference in how it feels for your foot. It's, it's pretty crazy. So the flat spot is supposed to be from around here to here. So heel goes back here and you've got the width for to move your toes around. Um, and this is where you, this is where your foot's going to be when you're when you're pushing. So it's a nice flat flat platform. Alrighty. I think that's pretty good. I mean, you're not going to get much flatter than that. There's a little low spot here, and I could come in and fill it with Bondo and try to make it all perfect, but I think it really is good enough for what I want. Yeah, so I opened, the, I opened this up early. If I had waited too long, the cement would have gotten too hard, and I wouldn't have been able to, to scrape it and shape it um, nearly as easily. Um, so that's that's why I just had to come out as early as it did. It did crack because of that, because it didn't do the rebar, and because the frame was too stupid. So now all I've got to do is I've just got to keep this wet for about a week. Um, I, I can't let it dry out. The, the, the cement needs the water to keep reacting and to keep hardening. So if it if if it if it dries out, it'll it, it'll stop hardening. So I just keep the hose right around here. I'll probably come out and wet it every day, just like this. And uh, then I'll throw this tarp on top of it, and that'll keep it uh, keep it from drying out. So. And then I just got to leave it for about a week. Water your cement every day. So the cement has been curing over the past three or four days. Um, it's been kept wet, except for today, because I'm letting it dry off. It's not completely cured yet. It's pretty close. Um, and it is hard enough for me to move without risking cracking it. Um, so that's why I'm bringing the wagon. This thing is still, like the outside is dry still. or The, the outside is dry, but the inside is still pretty wet. It's got a bag and a third of cement. So this thing's probably um, over 100 pounds. So... <laughs> So that's a lot of fun. Can't very well carry that, so I've got the big old wagon. Um, when I press the other side, it's going to be twice as heavy as this, plus the weight of the V-lamps. So, um, but it'll be super heavy duty. So I'm going to get this over to the press, or so I'm going to move this, get this in my car, take it to the shop, and I'm going to start working on the glue lamps for it. So instead of a completely solid glue lamb that's made of two by three side by side all packed together, I decided what I'm going to do that should be st strong enough but a lot easier to make is I'm going to use a piece of plywood for the full length and I'm going to glue that plywood to the concrete and then I'm going to do three runners of two by threes or two by fours, and then another piece of plywood 
on top of that. So it'll be in the end about this thick, but it'll save a lot of weight. Most of the strength for it is going to be coming from the two layers of plywood and the uh, the two by threes are acting just as a core to keep the two pieces of plywood attached together. Um, so it's kind of like uh, the same construction method as you'd use for like a foam core. So um, that should work really well I think and it should keep it lighter and cheaper than it would just doing a full um, um, than doing just a full VLAM of 2x3s. It also works better with the materials I already have. So I shouldn't have to go out and buy a bunch of 2x3s um, because I should have enough to do it like this already. I decided to go with 2x4s instead of 2x3s because um, they're straighter, um, what I've got here. The scraps of 2x3s I had were either too short or too crooked. So I've used 2x4s for this one. And so to get it started, all I gotta do is move this out of the way. Okay, this is mostly flat. Um, I got a pretty good, it's got a couple, a couple high spots and a few things to knock down. But I, I went after it with some scrap wood earlier, kind of make sure anything sticking up was not bad. You know, got quite a bit. So, all I gotta do, so I don't want this, I want this to be able to be attached firmly enough so that the concrete can hang from the glue lamp. Um, I want to use just glue if I can, but after I might have to go back and drill anchors into the concrete um, and anchor this down as well. But for now, I'm just gonna start with just glue. So. Uh, just a lot of glue. Okay, so I'm just using, I'm, I'm just putting down glue and spreading it the same way you would if you were putting together a deck. I'm just using 
quite a bit more glue. I want there to be plenty of glue to fit into all the spaces that are on the concrete press. Um, I'm also using just a scrap of Formica um, and I'm, I've just cut it and sanded it real quick to make it into a, into a shaper or a, into a, a scraper to spread out the uh, glue. And this works really good and you don't have to clean them. You just toss them in the garbage. So now I've got to move this under here without getting glue on my shirt. So I think I'm going to do a switcheroo. Like that. So I actually cut the plywood a little short. Uh, I made it 48 inches long instead of 50 inches, or I made it 48 inches long instead of 49 inches long. Um, and that was because I had a lot of 48 inch long pieces of wood. That's how wide plywood comes. It becomes, it comes, um, comes 48 inches wide. So, so I had a lot of um, this side where the crack has started from when I first moved the press when it was green. Um, this crack finally spread all the way through. I was trying to, um, I was trying to flush this side up here, right here, um, but the glue had already started to set. So when I hit it, it just spread the crack like that. So that's no fun, but it should be fine. Um, so I've got this clamped up, it's glued in the cracks, and it's glued to the base. It's probably not the best glue seal because of how uneven the surface is, but it should be good enough. Like I said, I might have to go back in afterwards with concrete anchors. Um, so this is, what, this is where I'm leaving it for right now. I've actually got to go off to work. I just got a call. Um, so I'm gonna head up Hopefully it'll be fast and I'll be able to come back. Um, this glue should be dry by that time and I can start working on um, building the rest of the glue line. I'll be able to turn this around and start screwing and nailing these together to this. All right, let's take a look-see. been about two and a half hours. That looks pretty good. Oh, but not here. It's definitely not attached here.
Hmm. What to do about that? Here's what we're gonna do. Put this down. Hope this stays glued while I work on it. Put the VLAN to the VLAM together, glue it up, screw it together, then flip it over and let it finish drying overnight with the concrete pressing itself down onto the wood. And then it should should be good. So this is gonna go. Oh yeah. So these ones are the right length. Here, here, and here. So all I've got to do, I've got to take out some screws in this one and some staples, and then I'll be ready to go. Good to go. Alright, so there we go. This should be plenty, plenty rigid and strong for the press so that this doesn't crack anymore. Um, the clamps, I think it's, I think the glue 
um, is a little too dry for the clamps to be doing a whole lot to glue the cement to the VLAN. But um, the clamps are mostly there because of uh, the, the wood not being perfectly straight. So I can clamp it up and make sure that all the glue seams here are all really good. So there we go. Now all I gotta do is cut this off somewhere out of the way in the shop because I won't be able to get this in my car to take it home to where it's out of the way. So um, after this, um, what I've got to do is um, bondo a few places up, um, like the cracks where there's gaps now, um, these two spots where it, it leaked into the mold and caused it to swell up so there's, there's dents there. And then I get to build the wooden frame for this, which is going to um, allow me to pour the other half of the concrete press. So um, I'll be able to build up the walls and just screw them into the VLAN. And then when I'm done, I'll be able to unscrew them for the VLAN. So it's basically a repeat of the last couple videos where I made the concrete mold from the wooden mold, except now I'm going to be making a concrete mold from the concrete mold. The real important difference is going to be I'm going to be um, having a layer in between that's going to uh, make up the difference of the board's thickness. So there we go. Longboard technology over and out.